going to get another bucket burrow in the ground so these ladies have their own home and um, the rabbits have already excavated some of this area and with the ground being so extremely hard um, I'm going to choose this spot right here where they have already started digging and I'm going to soak the ground to make it a little bit easier for me okay so I'm going to try and take you through the process of making one of these bucket burrows that we got. This idea we got uh, from another channel, uh, Be Not Slothful, we've mentioned them before on the channel. I don't know where he got the idea from, if they came up with it themselves. At any rate, I uh, really like it and it's worked out for us for the last, I don't know, six months almost. With the rabbits we've got and so we're gonna make another one and I'll show you how to do that so you're gonna start out with two five gallon buckets uh, I picked up one from the store today three dollars I think is what it cost uh, we've got this boy how big is this I don't even know two and a half gallon two gallon bucket a small bucket basically something around the diameter of at least five inches um, I would say nothing smaller than that um, this is obviously bigger than that but that's fine uh, you're gonna need a regular style lid like this uh, for one bucket for the other bucket you're gonna need a special lid where'd I put it one of these doohinkies that you can pop on and then it's the center of it unscrews like so and you'll be able to that's the main that's where you want the the, the heart of the burrow where the the rabbit's gonna nest if you're breeding or, or whatever that's where they'll stay this will kind of this other one's kind of an entry entry burrow the entrance to the burrow and then you're gonna make a tunnel this will be for the tunnel between the two and uh, I'll show you what we got to do as far as getting everything cut out for that. What I've used to cut the holes out of the buckets is just a regular jigsaw. Nothing special there. You can use whatever cutting utensil works for you to cut through this thick plastic. I've got a 5 16 inch uh, drill bit. We're going to drill holes in the bottom of the buckets and then I've got this it's a five inch diameter round thing that I'm going to use to trace my hole for the entrance and the holes between the two five gallon buckets for the, the tunnel. So you've got to cut a, a hole near the top here because it's going to get buried to ground level and so you want this hole to be as close to the top as you can get it uh, and still be able to put a lid on it. And this is really thick plastic right here. So something to think about when you're picking out your buckets. I could still cut through this, but I wanna make it easier on myself. So we'll use the uh, good old fashioned Home Depot bucket because it's obviously not a high quality bucket. It's a little bit thinner up here. I'll mark my markings. Where's my pencil? I have pencil. And now I don't. Here we go. Marker might be better for this, but pencil works for me. All right, so this is what I've got. I'm gonna trace this out. Um, the handles, 
I'll probably end up taking off anyway. But so I'm just gonna come down a little bit from the top because I know the lid's gonna cut through that or drop down. Just get a general idea, nothing fancy. Hopefully we can get that on the camera. They're light lines, but enough that I can see. So I'll trace that or cut that out with the jigsaw. So to give my jigsaw something to get started with, I'm gonna drill a hole. this bad boy in. And cutting. need to be much bigger than their heads they can they can squeeze through something if they can get their head in and a little bit more room um, this is a five inch diameter hole and I think it'll be big enough if it's not I'll cut it a little bit bigger but I, this is what I used last time okay so now that you've got that hole this is the entrance this will be uh, showing uh, above ground like you'll probably bury it up to here and then you can dig down a little bit so they can get down into it. The exit and entrance, the entrance to the tunnel that will lead to the other one will put down here, down at the base of it. So I'll get to mark that. And, and what I like to do is I'll start the entrance on one side of the bucket and on the opposite side, I'll do the exit. Could do it off to the side if you wanted to for whatever it doesn't really matter doesn't have to be accurate so let me trace this bad boy out and I'm gonna move it I'm gonna have it about inch and a half from the base of the, the bucket just so there's a little bit of a lip there if any water or anything gets in this, it doesn't immediately run into the other bucket. Same thing, drill a hole. Pilot hole for the jigsaw. And away we go. Dun da da da! Hole number two. All right. Clean the beard. I'll start on the next big hole. The last big hole we need to make will be on the main burrow bucket. And this one I want to kind of match up with the, the bottom hole that I made on the first bucket. So I'm gonna just kind of get an idea real close to. I guess I can just use my measurement of an inch and a half. Draw that sucker out. And this will be the hole that the connecting tunnel will go through. between buckets. Look at that perfectly round hole. Isn't that beautiful? I'm awesome. And you know rabbits care a lot about perfection and they want their uh, entrance to their burrow to be symmetrically perfectly round okay so that is the main burrow now since I'm using a bucket like this for my tunnel I'm gonna cut out the bottom of this I forgot about that 
another perfectly round hole. <clears throat> so this one will sit between the two buckets, big buckets, and allow passage between the two. Something like that. Now there's one more thing I need to, to do before we can take these out and put them in the ground. And that's to drill holes in the bottom of both of the, the burrow buckets. Um, when you dig the holes um, for these big buckets, what I do is I dig down three inches, two to three inches below them and <clears throat> fill that with gravel, loose gravel, just little, I think uh, what I've got out there is um, half inch pea gravel, quarter inch pea gravel, something like that, small stuff. Um, whatever you want, and then you drill a bunch of holes, this 5 16 drill bit in the bottom of these buckets, and that way if any water does get in, it's not sitting right there in the bottom of the bucket, it seeps through into the ground, and uh, helps keep things dry. Moisture is not a good thing when it comes to, to animals, especially where they sleep and stay. You want to keep them dry, help keep bacteria and stuff from forming. <clears throat> so. What I do is I just kind of make a round, go around the perimeter um, every couple of inches, drill a hole, and then I do a, another circle like that every couple of inches and just kind of do that to the middle. I don't know, I just do that because I think it looks good. It has proven to be good enough. And there we have it. That should allow sufficient drainage of water, um, even with bedding in there. Uh, we use straw and <clears throat> bark uh, and let them get whatever they can <clears throat> and fill it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this next one. So to sum it up, you have to dig two holes and then a highway in between the two holes. You want to make sure you're digging it further down than the bucket so you can fill it with gravel for drainage. Um, a friend told me that, her, that another friend of hers had this set up and she lost a whole litter to flooding. Um, and if you take measures against that, you should be safe. All right, so I have left plenty of room underneath the bucket for gravel for drainage. Now I'm gonna test the highway in between to see how much further I need to go for that. So I need to go a little wider and a little further down. Yes. Okay, so now I need to get one more hole dug for the entrance that goes into the tunnel and into the nest. Almost there. So I've dug everything down, I've dry fit everything. I'm gonna put two to three inches of gravel in the bottom and then I'll fit the buckets back in before we backfill. You want to make sure there's a semi-tight fit. I mean, it doesn't have to be super tight, but 
We want it to fit in nicely. There are gaps, but that is going to be backfilled in and it won't affect the operation. So I've sloped the entrance um, and we're hoping that this will settle and make a nice um, form around the buckets. I am going to open up the nesting area and get any dirt that may have fallen in from the backfill. Oh, not too bad. In fact, I probably won't bother with it. Just leave it as is. We'll add a bunch of straw and we have a successful bucket burrow system for our other bunny. So as the winter season is rapidly approaching us here in uh, southeastern Idaho, we're excited that we now have two burrows in the ground to help keep these rabbits safe and warm this, this winter. Um, we are on day 31 from when we bred the two does. So uh, this rabbits have babies between 28 and 31 days. We'll find out soon hopefully today if we're going to have some babies. Thanks for coming along with us today on this crazy adventure that we like to call homesteading. Make sure to give us that thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe. Hopefully we will see you tomorrow.